So you might be thinking of buying a launch pad or you might have recently bought one and need some help getting up and running using it. Now I'm gonna be explaining the basics of the launch pad that you don't need any previous knowledge to be able to work along with, so stay tuned. Hi there guys, it's John Holt here with The Audio Journey, helping make music production accessible to all. And here on this channel, what we do is focus tutorials aimed towards beginners. So if you're new here and new to music production, then consider subscribing. So today, we're gonna to be looking at a really cool piece of kit from a brand called Novation, and it's called the Launchpad. Now it's one of the most popular products of its kind on the market, but it's so widely misunderstood by beginners. So what I'm gonna do is break down what you can actually do with it, and what you need to be able to use it. So first and foremost, what is a launchpad? Now a launchpad is a controller for a piece of software called Ableton Live. And Ableton is a piece of software that you can record music into and then edit that music in. It's a digital audio workstation or DAW or DAW as it's abbreviated down to. And um, just like Logic, Pro Tools, Cubase, GarageBand, programs like that. And Ableton also has a performance aspect, hence Ableton Live and we can take control of that using the Launchpad. Now a free version of Ableton Live comes with the Launchpad, so you don't need to buy it separately, which is great. So now what I'm gonna do is jump into Ableton and show you around. That way you can really build up an understanding of how the software, Ableton, links up with the hardware, the Launchpad. So this is the first screen that you hit when you open up Ableton Live, and I'm gonna explain this view in comparison to something that you're probably familiar with, which is Microsoft Excel. Now you can see that we've got rows coming across, columns coming down, and also cells, or what would be cells in Microsoft Excel. Now what would be columns in Microsoft Excel are called tracks in Ableton Live. And we can come up to create and insert new tracks of audio or MIDI. Now you can have up to eight tracks in the free version, Ableton Live Lite, which comes with the launchpad, and eight cells in each, which makes 64, and that's more than enough to make a simple song or performance. Now what will be rows coming across here are called scenes in Ableton Live. And you can actually launch a whole scene at a time with these buttons just down the right hand side, and you can stop everything from playing by clicking this button just down here. And finally, what would be cells in Microsoft Excel are called clip slots in Ableton. And these are empty spaces that you can fill with clips of sound. So just one more time, they're clip slots, which are empty, that you can fill with clips of sound. Now you can see that the launch pad has an eight by eight grid. This corresponds to the clip slots in Ableton Live. So if I press some pads on the launch pad, you'll see these light up, meaning I'm indicating that I'm hitting that slot. And the buttons on the right of this are the scene launch buttons that I was saying about that you can launch a whole scene in one go with. Now what we're gonna do is fill up some clip slots with clips from the folder just over on the right hand side here. And let's search for a tempo of about 125. Set the project to that. And this one looks good. So we've got a bass line, a beat, and some keys. And we've got three instances of each. So what I'm gonna do is put these clips into some clip slots and then start launching them using the pads, hence launch pad. Now you'll notice that I've added three clips up into clip slots just here and these top three pads on the launch pad have lit up. Now I'm gonna change the color to make them stand out a little bit more on the recording. Now 
Okay, we can see that a little bit better now. Now what we can do is launch these clips by pressing the pad, hence launch pad. So here we go. I'm gonna turn these down a little bit. You can trigger one row at a time by pressing the scene launch button over here. Now in order to stop a clip from playing, you can trigger an empty clip slot on the same track. So if you want to stop the beat playing, trigger an empty clip slot and the beat's stopped. Now by that same logic, if we trigger a whole empty row, that will stop everything from playing. And there we go. You'll also notice that nothing comes in out of time. So when I press something, there's sometimes a delay to it starting. And basically what's happening is when you launch a clip, it never starts out of time. It always starts on the next beat. So you can never ever launch a clip and they're, and they're out of time. And the same goes for stopping. It will never just cut out in the middle. It will always stop at the end of the next beat. Now it's important to know the difference between the two things that can be playing at any one time. And that's individual clips like these or the overall session. Now we can see that we've been playing some clips now. And up here, the overall session is controlled. And we can see that the overall session is still running. That's controlled up here by these stop and start buttons and launching individual clips is what we've just been doing. So they're played here and stopped here. But these stop buttons don't control the overall session. That's only controlled up here. I'm now gonna demonstrate how you could perform a track and record it with the launch pad. Firstly, we've stopped all of the tracks from playing. So none of these are green. Then we're gonna hit record on the overall session so that we record everything that we do. Next, I'm just gonna start launching things. So I'm gonna start off with some keys. Bring in a beat. just the keys for a bit. And then I'm gonna bring it all in for a chorus. And there we go. Now in order to see that, we've stopped all of the clips, but the overall session is still going up here. So what we're gonna do is click stop. Now you might be thinking, where is my recording? It's a good question. What we need to do is come up to the second view in Ableton Live, which you do by clicking these two buttons up here. Now this is the recording that we just did and we can actually listen back to it. So what we need to do is activate this side of Ableton, the, uh, the arrangement view, by clicking this button just here and then let's listen back to that. Thank you. 
and there we go that's the track that we've just recorded and you could then just export this as an audio file so an mp3 or a wav by coming up doing export audio master and it can either be an AIFF or a WAV file and then export now choose you where you want to put it launchpad demo there we go now on my desktop we have just an audio file. Now you can actually make your own clips using audio or MIDI. And the way to do this is just like in any other door, recording audio or using MIDI to trigger a virtual instrument like a synthesizer or a sampler. So if we open up one of these clips, we can see that it's standard MIDI notes, as you would see in Logic or in Pro Tools or in Reason or in Cubase. Now Ableton isn't available on iPad or tablet, but you can download the Launchpad app for iOS and hook up your Launchpad with a USB to lightning adapter and use it just like is being demonstrated in this video on screen. Now this is great for if you're not that interested in producing your own music, but you want to use the Launchpad to create cool sounding tracks using the preloaded sounds. Now the Launchpad also works with other pieces of software, however it doesn't work with as much functionality. It was specifically designed to work with Ableton, but all it does is send MIDI notes, which all doors can receive. Ableton just allows you to do more with the Launchpad. In this tutorial I've explained Session Mode, the first of four modes on the Launchpad. It is the main one, but I'll be exploring the others in later videos, so be sure to subscribe to see those. Now I hope this video about the Launchpad has been helpful, and if you've got any questions at all, then feel free to get in touch via any of the links that are down in the description below. Now one thing about the videos on this channel is you're always gonna get an answer to any sort of questions that you have, so I would really urge you to get in touch if there's anything that's niggling on your mind that you're not quite sure about. Now down in the description below, there's a link if you wanted to go through and get a Launchpad. Now I'll disclose it, it's an affiliate link. So if you do click through to it and buy the launch pad, I get a small commission. It doesn't change the price for you, but it does help to support the channel. And I just wanted to fully disclose that. And it would really mean a lot to me if you wanted to support the channel in that way. Now, as an extra bonus for staying right till the end, if you're watching this video within the first couple of weeks of release, then I'm running a competition to win a launch pad Mark II. I've included some details in the description below but essentially all you have to do is subscribe to this channel, The Audio Journey. I'll be posting out on all of my social media channels about when and where I'm gonna announce the winner, and it's gonna be through some sort of live video, so make sure you keep an eye on those channels, go ahead and follow me on those to be in with a chance of winning the Launchpad. Now, as I said at the beginning, this channel is based around helping beginners get into music production because it can be quite intimidating at the start. There's not a lot of sort of guided tuition that takes you through step by step from the beginning. And that's exactly what I'm aiming to do here. So if that's something that you'd be interested in, then I would love to have you subscribe so that you can get more tutorials just like this. And if there's anything that I can do to help at any point, then feel free to get in touch via the links in the description below. Now, I've been John Holt with The Audio Journey, and I hope to see you again soon. Take care.